Yo, what is cool, y'all? Hope that all you guys are doing well. In today's tutorial, I'll be breaking down these three crazy mass transitions on your subjects or just objects inside of your music videos. They're all really clean and not too hard to make. I'll be going through everything step by step when it comes to these transitions, how to get them as clean as possible, and how to make them as fast as possible. So follow along and let's jump straight into it. Real quick before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that I'm currently running a huge sale on my shop, store for black friday so if you're watching this today there might actually be time left on the sale like most of you guys know i'm running a huge buy one get one free sale so if you buy a pack you'll be getting another for completely free and if you buy two packs you'll be getting two packs for completely free it's actually crazy and i barely do any sales like this so make sure to go and check it out as well as my new money overlays pack that works with all softwares but enough yapping and i'm gonna jump straight into the tutorial i kind of cheated and finished all three effects so i'll show you guys what it looks like and because I recorded this full tutorial, but the audio wasn't recording, so let's do it all again. So I'll be going into my first composition right here. So here we have my two different clips, and I want the transition to come in right here. So I'll start off by masking out my subject in this clip, just using the road brush tool and going around him really quickly. And I won't be going through the masking step by step because that's really simple. And if you don't know how to do that, make sure to go and check another tutorial and then come back because I'm not trying to drag out this tutorial. I, so I just finished masking out my subject and as you can tell my masking isn't the cleanest right now. I'm just doing it for the sake of this tutorial. But try to get your masking as clean as possible and as you can see your masking might also have a little rough edges right here so to get rid of that I'm going to add on a refined soft matte effect and let's lower down the additional edge radius and turn up the feather a little bit. Just play with this till you get something that looks good for your clip and now we should kind of save the masking and make it look a lot better and it really does so now that i've done that i'll be duplicating this layer and drag it over to the clip before a couple frames in like halfway through the clip before depending on how long your clips are but i'll be cutting it right here that's around half a second and then i'll be selecting the layer and go to time and press time reverse layer and now if I play it through, this is what I got. It's synced up correctly and we can also remove the masking from here. So now it's synced up correctly like I just showed you and now I'll be making the transition. So select this layer and press Y button on your keyboard to move the anchor point and I'll be moving it up to the top right corner. And now that we've done that, I'll be making a keyframe for the scale and put it to the end of our clip and then go all the way to the beginning and drag the scale all the way up till I can't see my subject in frame anymore right there and then I'll be selecting my keyframes press F9 to ease them and head to the graph editor and I'll be using the value graph if, if your graph doesn't look like this just head right here and press value graph and then create a graph that looks something like this and this will make sure that it's as smooth as possible so that it goes fast in the beginning and then slows down and make sure to add on some motion blur and then lastly I'll be adding on a camera lens blur onto my subject and this is just to make it look a little bit more realistic so I'll turn up the camera lens blur to 15 at the beginning right here when it comes in and keyframe that one and then go in when he's starting to get like more centered into your frame maybe here and right there it should be good and turn it back to zero now we should have a little blur going on right there just to make it look a little bit better and i'll also actually add on a camera lens blur to the background and keep it at zero when your subject comes in and keyframe that and then when our subject is fully centered i'll be turning the camera lens blur up to like 12 just so that our subject is in focus so it kind of looks like the focus is shifting from the background onto the subject it's nothing that you notice it's just supposed to be something subtle and you can turn up the camera lens blur if you'd like to and lastly i'll be adding on a shake from my shake pack that will be dropping next week so I'll create an adjustment layer and if you have any shake presets, make sure to add them on just to spice it up a little bit. So after adding on a little shake preset, this is what I got. And that's smooth, nothing too much, just a clean transition. And I'm happy with how that looks, so let's jump straight into the next one. 
So here we got the next two clips that I'll be working on. And once again, create a transition. So we can start off by masking out our subject and I won't be going through that at all. So let's jump straight into the next step. So here I got my subject masked out and I'll be dragging this layer over once again, like we did last time, like halfway through the clip before and press time reverse layer. And now if I play through, this is what I got. Once again, just synced up. And this time we will actually be duplicating this mask layer and we can hide one of them. And the top one right here, I'll be pre-composing just like this. No, actually let's remove the duplication and let's just work with this one for now. So I'll start off by grabbing the rotor brush tool once again. So we're going to rotoscope out the rotoscoping. And this time we will only select his head so we can have that masked out separately. So we just try to get a clean masking of the head. So after masking out his head, this is what I got. And once again, I'll be adding on a refined soft matte. And this is what it looks like with the refined soft matte. And now I'll be duplicating this layer. And with the duplication, I'll be going to the rotoscope settings right here. Inverge foreground slash background. And now we got his body and his head separated, as you can see, in two different maskings. So the first one that I'll be working with is his head. So now to create a transition with his head, I'll be starting off by pressing Y on my keyboard once again and move the angle point up to the middle of his face and put it right there because that will because that will make our rotation look a lot better later on. So make sure to do that before we start messing with the Y position. Now I'll create a keyframe for the position and drag it to the end of the clip and go to the beginning of the clip and drag the position all the way down till his face is out of the frame. Now I'll be selecting my keyframes, go to position and press separate dimensions. And now I'll be easy easing my Y keyframes because that's the only ones I'm working with and head to the graph editor. I'm going to create something that goes faster in the beginning and slows out throughout the clip, but I don't want it to go too fast in the beginning. So I'll keep it something like this and turn on the motion blur because we still want time for the rotation right here. So that's why I left some space here. If you don't have rotation, you could bump this up all the way, but I'm going to keep it like this. So now let's create a keyframe for the rotation, drag it to the end. Let's start it right here. So I'll turn the rotation to something like minus 140 and easy ease those keyframes. And once again, let's create a graph that goes fast in the beginning and then slows down throughout the clip. So now we've got this going on. And now we will be working with the body. And for the body, we can do a lot of different things. Pause. We could either move the anchor point like we did last time like this and then zoom through. So his body comes out like this. Since I already showed that technique, I don't want to go through it again. So I'll be showing you another technique, which will be just messing with the position. So let's create a position keyframe and drag it all the way to the end. And then let's start with the body transition like a few frames later than the head transition. So let's drag his body all the way to the left till you can't see it in the frame anymore. Just like that. And now let's create a smooth keyframe for that one too. Now press position and separate dimensions once again and easy is our keyframes and for his body let's create a keyframe that looks something like this and let's drag it over like that and uh, we will get something that looks a little bit better for this transition so let's do it like this and we kind of want the red line right here to go under or above however you want to see it but let's play it through so now if you look at our graph it looks like this it goes over and then back and we can see it on our subject too. It goes above and then all the way back. That gives a little variation and looks a little better in my opinion. So I'll be going with that. And then once again, I'm going to add a shake for my shake pack. So create a new adjustment layer. And this shake pack is going to drop next week. But this time I just want something subtle. So let's go with this. I'm happy with how that looks. So let's jump straight into the next one. So the third and final masking effect will be this zoom through effect and I'll be showing you how to make it smooth and kind of make the eye come back right there. So like I did last time, I'll actually cheat and I already got my clip masked out. So just like the last couple of times, duplicate your masking, drag it over a few frames. And just like that, let's keep it there. And then go to time reverse layer and reverse it. 
Now go to the beginning of your clip and move the anchor point to the middle of your subject's eye or whatever you're zooming through. Just move it to the middle. That way we can work with the scale and get a perfect zoom through. Just like this, zoom it all the way through. And now you can tell we only have this little little part right here of her eye, but it won't be visible when we're playing it through. These are keyframes for the scale. And head to the graph editor and let's work with the value graph. And I'm going to create something that looks like this. We want it to go really fast in the beginning because it's 4000% scaled up. And then slower throughout the transition. So it slows down right there. Let's keep it like this. I'm happy with how that looks. And now to kind of get her eye back into the scene before right here, I'll be duplicating my layer once again and head to the invert foreground slash background. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention af after you mask out your subject, make sure to press the invert button right here. That way you can zoom it through because if you don't, you will only have a masking of the eye. So now we got our eye back into the scene. We will go, we'll be going to the end right here and create a keyframe for the position and then go like halfway through the clip now let's do right here just towards the end this is like one third into the clip and i'll cut it right there and i'll be moving the eye down when it comes to the position and easy is your keyframes and head to the speed graph this time and let's create something like this so that's pretty smooth and i'm happy with how that looks only thing that's a little bit messy is the feather you can see right there so to get rid of that I'll be turning up the shift edge and after turning up the shift edge this is what I got looks a lot better so now if we go back so this is the final transition and I'm happy with how that looks and if you follow my steps you should also be pretty happy with how that looks for you but thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Like I said before, you have a few hours left to check out the Black Friday sale. So make sure to do that. If you edit a lot of videos, it's definitely going to help your workflow. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.